Hey everybody, sorry for the odd angle, um, I realized I still haven't met my goal of doing a video for the personal channel for the month, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little overview of some stuff, and I figured I'd show my cassette collection off. I finally figured out what I want to do with my spare room, and I finally figured out how I want to set it up for my video editing, my spirit projects, and my gaming and such. So I'm going to show you that first, and then I'm going to show my cassette collection. So that desk there, I'm going to get rid of. I'm going to put an L-shaped desk in there to fit in this corner. I set up my workbench over in that corner for now. I don't think that I'll have any issues with space clearance between that and the L-shaped desk. But I also moved the Hoyer's Trinitron over there for that repair job. I finally got the board off of it. And I realized I forgot to record a few of the things that I did during the process, so that's not going to show up when I do finish that video. Then in this corner, I set up my one Trinitron I have. It's a Vega. It's not too big. It does do component S video. And I have a Sony DVD player that also happens to play Super Audio CDs. So I hooked that up to these Sony 90s speakers, and I'm pretty much postponing my 90s Sony setup for now. I am probably going to do it eventually, but with the way things are, I just want this to be a general all-purpose like retro thing not just 90s i am also working on repairing a 52 inch bravia but unfortunately i'm having issues getting the board so in this video i'm not going to be showing all the cassettes that we have for the sony file collection i don't feel like pulling them out of where they're organized first off let's start with all my rush cassettes i picked these up at well i picked up most of these albums at the one local record store we actually have a record store in town called sonic extension records if you live in the williamsport area or like northeast pa I definitely suggest going there. So I picked up Permanent Waves, Fly By Night, and Hemispheres. I'm not super big on Rush, I definitely like Prague. I had a one roommate who was really big on it, and in a way he kind of soured my taste for it because he'd be really snooty about it. One of my stranger things in my collection is the Beavis Butthead experience. I don't think it's super rare, but it definitely includes some neat covers like Anthrax's cover Looking Down the Barrel of a Gun by the Beastie Boys. Then I have David Gilmore's About Face album. This is one of his solo works, and I also have Roger Waters' Radio Waves. I like both these albums. I'm a pretty big Pink Floyd fan. I like both these albums, and I'm a pretty big Pink Floyd fan. Uh, I really like the concept of Roger Waters' Radio Waves. Or Radio Waves, I'm sorry, Radio Chaos. So this is going to be more out of order than I thought, since I kind of just all have it with me. But I have some Faith No More albums. I actually got both Angel Dust, which is a really good album. And then I got a hold of the Korean release of Angel Dust. And some of the tracks are rearranged on this, and they actually are missing two of the tracks. I'm not sure why they brought it over there and removed those, but then I have The Real Thing, another really good album. And then I have King for a Day, Fool for a Lifetime. I don't care for this as much as the other two albums, but I still enjoy it. And there's definitely some good tracks on there. Like, I really enjoy Just a Man, and then I also like Take This Bottle. I find them pretty relaxing. Most of my Alice in Chains albums would actually be with the Sony file stuff because Columbia was bought out in like 89 by Sony, so. Besides that, I got two copies of Facelift. I believe they're the same release. Yeah. I might as well show all these at once. I have multiple Anthrax albums. I got The Sound of White Noise. I actually got two different releases of it. The one the tape's kind of bad, the, uh, the little sponge thing that kind of pushes it up to the player head. That is kind of shot, so I gotta pull that open and repair that, but I'm keeping both of them. And I got Stomp 442. I enjoy this album. I enjoy pretty much any Anthrax album, but I have Spreading the Disease as well. Uh, with things going on right now, it's kind of a weird thing to think about. In terms of time, I really consider this the best of the original Anthrax albums. Yeah, it's State of Euphoria, which I actually picked up a few months ago, so that's from last year. Speaking of 90 bands I like, here's Soundgarden. I have two different versions of Super Unknown, or two different pressings of it. And then I also have Bad Motor Finger. I think Bad Motor Finger is the better album, but I feel like Super Unknown is a lot more relaxing and easier to listen to. Almost missed it, but I actually have three of the Faith No More singles. I have their cover of Easy by the Commodores. And then I got the Falling to Pieces and the Epic cover. These actually have radio mix edits of these songs. Here's my only Cure album, The Wish. This is famous for the song Friday I'm In Love. That's probably the biggest hit, I'd say. I got two Talking Heads albums. I got Little Creatures and I got Naked. I like both these albums, but I think I would choose Little Creatures over the other one. I really think Road to Nowhere is a pretty nice melancholy look at the end of times. This is pretty neat. I looked after the one local record store for a little bit while the boss had to go take care of something. So he gave me this copy of Ill Communication by the Beastie Boys in exchange. Then here's Temple of Dog, their self-titled and only album. 
Uh, it's famous for being pretty much the start of what would become Pearl Jam and then part of Soundgarden with Chris Nilk, Cornell, and Eddie Vendor. I really enjoy all the tracks on these except for I feel like Reach Down drags on way too long. Since it's an 11 minute song, I really feel like it should only be about three. Here's my only Clash album, Combat Rock. Can't really miss out on this. This is Mother Love Bone. This is considered one of the precursors to most of the grunge bands. It's more of hair metal, but I consider it like the best hair metal. I missed one of my Rush albums. I actually have 2112. And I have one Who album, Quadrophenia. I'm not sure how they did it, but they fit the whole album, which is like a double vinyl onto one cassette. It doesn't seem to have that high of audio quality, so I imagine they somehow sacrificed that. We have a whole lot of Bob Dylan. Got the greatest hits. Got Infidels. Got Bond of the Tracks, which is probably one of my favorite albums by him. Highway 61 Revisited. Empire Burlesque. Slow Train Coming, I think I have some more. Here's my Thin Lizzy cassettes. I have Black Rose, a rock legend. Thin Lizzy Dedication, the very best of Thin Lizzy. Actually, the first song of this dedication, or I don't think it's the first track. It's the final track, actually. That is not actually a Thin Lizzy song. That was a super group project he was working on before he died. They have their most famous one, Jailbreak, which has the boys are back in town in Jailbreak. I got some Jethro Toll. I really like Prague. So I have the original Masters, and I got Thick as a Brick. I almost lost it, but I have Aqualung. Then there's a couple Prince tracks. I have the Cream single, and I have 1999. I also have him in the Revolution's work, Purple Rain. I got two copies of that. They're both kind of worn. I have Under the Cherry Moon, songs from that soundtrack, and my favorite one off this is probably when Sometimes It Snows in April. And I have Around the World in a Day. Here's some two metal ones. There's Megadeth's Rust in Peace, which is probably my favorite album by them. And then here is Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast. I'm not sure if this is my favorite Iron Maiden album, but I still like it. It's probably their most played one with Number of the Beast on it. And I have a couple Doors albums. I have the Best of the Doors. I got the Greatest Hits pretty similar and then I have the self-titled album their debut one which I really like and then my also other favorite Doors album the soft parade I got living colors debut album this is most famous for cult of personality and says other tracks that I enjoy such as their cover memories can't wait by talking heads I think this is my only Beatles cassette I'm pretty sure it's anthologies volume one I forget where I got it but it was locally and it was pretty cheap then I only have two yes albums one fragile which is most famous for roundabout I believe and also very famous now that Jojo memes have made it a big thing again and then classic yes which is a contemplation album I have multiple Queen albums I'm pretty sure I have more somewhere in storage that I just can't find I have their one greatest hits album I have hot space which is most famous for their song they did with David Bowie under pressure and I have news to the world, and I have the game. Now the only band left that I have to go over is Black Sabbath, which I have a couple of them actually. I got the Mob Rules. I got this Greatest Hits one, which is a Netherlands release if I believe. Then Masters of Reality. I got a copy of Paranoid. I have another European copy of Paranoid. It really looks like a bootleg, but evidently it's an official release in like Norwegian areas or something. And then the last one, Heaven and Hell. So there you have it, that's most of my cassettes. I have a bunch more. I'm probably going to go through and do another update video. Right now, collecting them is not really going so good because pretty much any record store or thrift store or anything is closed down in quarantine, so I can't really look. I have been following a few on eBay, but I'm kind of slowing down because I need to save some money for some other projects. That and also my tape deck I was using is locking up. I can kind of understand why YouTubers like Tech Mode or something could have projects that could take them multiple months. Not only of ordering parts or trying to repair it and actually making like the space to work on this. Video editing also isn't as easy as I thought it would be. It can be kind of time consuming and I've made a few mistakes doing my videos before. I also understand why YouTubers can repeat themselves a bit. I realize I do that in my videos because I'm working on something for about half an hour at a time. And I forget if I touched on the subject or not. But I feel like that's a pretty soothing thing to show off. Anybody else like cassettes out there? I hope you enjoyed my collection. I'll probably do this again in a few months, probably not anytime soon. Until next month, everybody, stay safe. I really hope that things kind of get good soon now. I know this is not going to just happen instantly, but... So until next time, everyone, have a good day. Stay safe.